Well, hello and welcome everyone. Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic coming to you from the hustle and bustle of downtown City Market here in Savannah, Georgia. A nice crowd here on Main Street, home of the Prohibition Museum. So we've got a truck here with a, with a driver in there and a rear full of moonshine there just waiting to get our ticket to go inside and you guys get to come with me. Thanks for joining me guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad internet. Link below in the video description. Get yours with $10 off. Truly unlimited. No wires. None of that Starlink crap where you got to set up a dish and wires and plug in a modem. Just push a button. Nomad internet. Good to go. How I upload all my videos. Let's enjoy Savannah. giant friendly cookie jar here smiling at us we are waiting we've got about 15 minutes till we check in to the museum let's go check out the front of it though there it is the only american prohibition museum here and of course downstairs is a bar <laughs> literally serving alcohol right below the prohibition museum it was hard times in america back then although i don't know a whole lot about it i cannot Imagine, I, I complained during COVID because of certain things going on. I cannot imagine uh, being around in prohibition times where they, they outlawed alcohol, no bush light, no Jack Daniels. The, they destroyed everything. Uh, what, a, what a hard time to live in, right? <laughs> And now, and actually Savannah, Georgia is, is hustle and bustle in here in the city market be because you can drink. Savannah is like uh, Memphis or Vegas or one of the other towns you can walk around with an open beer. You can. Now we're going to go check out the museum right now. Don't worry about getting a ticket, guys. You guys are coming in on me. Oh, that's cool. All right, got my ticket, 17 bucks. Look at this, it's just like going back in time. They've got wax figures, bread, not beer, liquor is a curse, she says. <laughs> wow, this is really neat. Look at the balcony up there. I don't know what he's mad about. He's driving for Budweiser. Maybe they just told him no more alcohol. And, yeah, and then we got a newspaper boy Liquor Bashing Crusader Billy Sunday. Liquor Bashing? Wow. An old uh, screen plane there. And then, uh, yeah, we walk through here. I guess we go up the stairs. Okay, I've heard of Billy Sunday, the, the, the tent revival guy that was anti-alcohol. <laughs> Let's go upstairs. It says, first you take a drink, then the drink takes a drink, then the drink takes you. Oh my gosh, temptation is the devil uh, looking through a keyhole. All right, whatever you say. Wow. So there's a mural here that shows back in the day, children uh, in the street with buckets and stuff collecting a liquid. Well, they've recreated that here as you've got a police officer breaking through a wall and stealing barrels of liquor. And then this guy with an ax, slashing the barrels and pouring the bush light down the street. Oh, what a tragic waste. And then you've got children <laughs> with cups. And actually, I wanna say the wax figures are really good in this museum, filling up whatever they can get from the street corner to sell it on the black market, or I don't know, maybe, maybe the kids drink it. So weird, what a strange time. All right, let's go around this corner over here. Uh-oh, cops, cops, hold this. We got, a, we got a beer cop here because they had to board up all the bars. So it's locked up. You think you're big and tough. Yeah, again, the wax figures. Look at these guys drinking, drinking. And this guy's like, hey, can I get some of that? I need, I need some of that, that good stuff. Yeah. All right, and then we got the fury of the tempest ignites. The women bashing the barrels of liquor with axes. Just bush light hating. <laughs> I got a few of those on my YouTube channel, actually. They even had the children out there picketing and protesting. Vote dry. Of course, you've probably heard of uh, Carrie A. Nation, the Temperance Crusade, Trinkets, and her axe. She would uh, go into the bar. Let's see all the glass broken back there. 
and the cash register broken, she would go in and just destroy, destroy the bars, break all the liquor. Hatchetations, carry nations, axe wielding war on saloons. It was a war. It has a couple of her axes. That one even says carry nations on it. Out with the whiskey. <laughs> Jeez. Chill, lady. Oh, uh, the saloon. Tristam's saloon is closed for violation of the National Prohibition Act. Wow. And <laughs> look at these women. They are so happy. They won the war on Bushlight. <laughs> no more drunkards. No more drinking. Forever. Actually, I will mention that as we get farther kind of northwest and go through the Bible Belt, uh, some places still have enacted dry counties or dry cities or dry places within the state. Uh, here in Savannah, Georgia, you can drink outside six days a week, but on Sundays, no alcohol. Now, some places that we'll visit have actually kind of made it a little more lenient. They've made it so you can drink on Sundays after like 12 or 1 p.m., like after church. But here in Savannah, no drinking on Sunday. If you come here on a Sunday, they will not serve you any alcohol. Oh, R.I.P. John Barleycorn. Oh, so sad. Whiskey and beer are all right in their place, but their place is in hell. <laughs> Look at this mural of the funeral of John Barleycorn. Wow, guys. Oh no, here's a sad picture. Thousands of farmers, brewers, distillers, coopers, distributors, truck drivers, warehouse workers, and clerks were put out of work by the prohibition. Of course, we visited the uh, Jack Daniels distillery on this channel and saw about how they tried to bottle some other things to survive prohibition. Here's a couple examples of uh, other companies doing the same. Coors made Malted milk, or tried to make malted milk. Budweiser, frozen eggs. <laughs> okay. And Strohn's made uh, malt syrup. Interesting. The big, big breweries did survive, but a lot of the smaller ones did not. Got to read some of these small plaques up there. It says the state of Kansas actually went dry in 1880. Much, much earlier. Got some early Lone Star beer there from Texas. They were misguided in their ways back then by thinking that by making alcohol illegal that it was gonna make things better. Look at all this whiskey pouring out of the building. But really, it made way for moonshiners. Yeah, looks like we're making some moonshine in this scene right here. Somebody uh, whittling up some wood. And uh, got some sugar, barley there, working out in the woods. Here's another neat story about blind pigs and tigers, because uh, they had to find a way to still get customers in, so they would advertise, come inside and see a blind pig. That's all we're gonna do with this uh, digital recreation here of a lady bringing us in. And she says, wait, what, is, what the heck? Oh, I think she's trying to say there's a place to drink, but... Oh, yeah, okay. Also, looks like she's saying there's a tuggy in the back, I don't know. But the old boar, yeah. And I guess you had to get creative back then. The old lady's not cooking biscuits anymore, she's making her own whiskey moonshine here in the kitchen at home. Mm-hmm. But look, just because uh, it's illegal, you can still get a medical prescription for your bush light or probably whiskey <laughs> of course it's always a loophole right got an old classic car here but uh you might notice some bullet holes throughout and uh, oh my the driver has uh taken a, a rough shot there with the couple the gangsters back there oh no yeah it was a dangerous business do you know the connection between bootleg moonshiners and NASCAR? There's a connection there because uh, they had to come up with a way to make the cars faster so that they could outrun the police chasing them. And then they got competitive between each other. And thus, that's what spawned NASCAR in the United States, was creating better, faster cars. Yeah. We got the uh, criminal lineup here, gangsters. 
Bugs Morin, Al Capone, hmm. and Machine Gun Jack McGurn. Here's some tools of the trade for moonshining. Looks like somebody tried to make a bomb to scare people. This violin case has a makeshift sawed-off shotgun. There's even some uh, fake guns made out of wood for, for prisoners. A little fake Tommy gun there. Here's what you're supposed to wear, gangsta style. Heck yeah. Here's a flapper in a glass cage here, getting their makeup set up. And then they got a mirror here so that you can learn to dance and do jazz dancing. Just like that up there. Yeehaw! The flapper craze sweeps the nation. <laughs> okay. In 1929, there were 32,000 speakeasies in New York. <laughs> Uh, yep. It's like an old style speakeasy where this is where they would look at you and talk to you and then you, you push the button. I'm playing not, I'm gonna push it. Oh, whoa, he's looking at us. Well, I want some, uh, I want some bush light. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. Wow. This little light up sign in here in the bar, you know, they would light it up if there's going to be a raid. The cops are coming to get you. Yeah. And uh, we have an old time bar here. Unfortunately, I'm visiting on Sunday, guys, and I did not plan this very well. You would normally be able to get whiskey and liquor in here, but not today. Of course, they can serve you other things. They've got mocktails up there and uh, you can still get something to drink here. Wow, it's really pretty. It's really cool. Why can't I have a drink in your speakeasy today? Because of Savannah's blue laws, yeah. Well, oh, the museum's not done. That little bar that, that would normally have alcohol is just a transition, and there's more museum in here. And remember we were talking about uh, NASCAR earlier and the connection with moonshiners. Well, here's another example. The liquor hauling hot rods Ford with a V8 flathead engine in 1936. <laughs> yep, and it begins. Somebody with a sign on the back of their Ford, I'm not a bootlegger, don't shoot. I'll stop. I just like fast cars, <laughs> right? And a, and a garage here, you know, where people would uh, have nothing else to do because they're not drinking. So let's make cars go really, really fast, right? Here they go racing on uh, dirt dirt roads in the 30s. Really grainy video there, but the, the start of the racing craze in, in the United States. Really cool. Oh, they got a whole board here. Moonshine Runners, uh, even the origin of NASCAR. Thunder Road. Oh, wow. Movie theater, TV, Prohibition era ended. Loop crowds hail repeal. They repealed it. And just like that, everything's reversed and we can drink again. Really cool spot, of course. There's a museum gift shop down here. That's a cool Savannah mural there. Exit and gift shop. This way. Nice. Looking at all their magnets here, of course. Hmm. Well, wow. That is the biggest magnet I've ever seen. Savannah, Georgia brew. It's a bottle of beer magnet bottle opener. That's pretty cool. But it won't stay even on here. So in the vibrations of the RV, that would not be a good one. Here's a bunch more magnets. I kind of like the barrel that says Savannah, Georgia. I'm gonna hold on to that one. Oh, I also like the, the bottle, the big jug. Mm, let's see anything else that's better? No, which one? I think I'm gonna go with the wood, the wood grain barrel there. Yeah. I don't have to open up my own uh, speakeasy back at the RV today if I want to drink. Might be one down there, but I'm not going to risk it. There's cops everywhere. All right, so change of plans. I was walking back to the car, and then I saw people drinking beer, and I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. They actually misinformed me at the museum. You cannot serve alcohol unless you also serve food. So here at this other bar, they're serving beer, and I got an American beer from Savannah, Georgia here. It's almost St. Patrick's Day. That's why there's so much green. 
So yeah, there's one other bar down the road that's completely closed because they don't serve any beer. Now, I would think maybe just have some popcorn for sale or something like they do in Montana all the time. Mm -hmm. ah, that's good stuff, good stuff, good Savannah beer. Yeah, we're gonna keep walking and drinking in Savannah, Georgia. There's a bar behind me, a tiki bar. There's a bar across the street over there. There's a lot of bars that are serving alcohol. And again, that little misinformation, you know, it's tough. Cause I was literally ready to just leave Savannah. We're gonna go check out a, a famous park here about 11 blocks away here in Savannah. So this is the cross street of Oglethorpe Avenue here. It's so pretty with the trees. Can you imagine driving down this road in Savannah? The trees and the Spanish moss going over the road. Such a pretty drive. About five blocks to go. Nice quiet little park here in Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. Where's all my Forrest Gump peeps? Life is like a box of chocolates. Yep. Chippewa Park here in Savannah is uh, where they filmed the bench seat from Forrest Gump. Although the bench has been removed, it's in another area because it was making this park too crowded, I guess. But this is the park where that scene was filmed. Well, that, that scene overlay goes throughout the whole movie, actually. But uh, it's a really pretty park. Again, lots of Spanish moss, lots of oak trees. Really pretty in this area of old Savannah. Yeah, such a beautiful place here. Savannah, I love it. Look, freaking palm tree right there. It's gorgeous architecture. They've got some uh, ghost tours here also, but I'm not staying the night. I want to get back to camp. In fact, we're going to go see the kitties right now and I'll show you where I'm camping. We're so close to South Carolina, except I have prior plans this week. I need to be, I need to be somewhere on Thursday. I think you guys will see this like Wednesday. I gotta, I gotta get somewhere. Yeah. Tara Bear, don't you want to know where we're going? When go and know where we're going this weekend, Ter Ter? I'ma tell ya. It's a secret though, I can't let everybody else hear. We're gonna go to Opie Dopies. Sound good? Mm. Alright, let's go. When I left Daytona, I let you guys know that uh I had planned to go see another race at another track, a new track. And uh, that time has now come. I had to get these tickets way in advance again. And uh <laughs> Yeah, two races this season. Uh, Got to pack up the RV, go get checked in, make sure the kitties are comfortable. You guys look for me on uh, turn four near the tunnel. I'll have a video here in a couple days. You guys be well, and again, if you're looking for some mobile RV repair, hit up my buddy King's Mobile RV Repair. He'll be in the uh, Kansas City area starting April 1st. So if you're in that area within like 100 miles, hit him up, shoot him a text, tell him what you got what you, or what you need. He'll get you taken care of. He'll get me taken care of also next month. But right now, if you ain't first, you're last. <laughs>